All right, another day for drawing. Okay, so grab a pen or a pencil or a marker or a burnt stump or a goopy pool of thin paint that you'll swirl in your mouth and blow over your hand. Whatever you want to work with today. Can be something very simple. Good work is always available at the other end of a simple tool. Can be a pretty tricky medium to work with. Or it can be something that you have a great amount of rapport with. Something completely new. Isn't it amazing the variety of materials and methods artists have produced for themselves through history? I mean, oil paint can replicate essentially any two-dimensional effect. You'd think that could have handled everything, but the demands of the artists are so much more than that. We have these moods where we want our idea not just to achieve a certain result, but to emerge from us in a particular way. There is a flavor to the performative aspect of it that we have preferences for. Today we want this idea to come out dry and scratchy, to really be carved into the paper. Today, we want our ideas to flow wetly, spilling everywhere. Other days, we want them sticky and oily, unfolding, molten onto the substrate. Other days, we need the ideas nebulous, made of light and electricity, free to change at any time. This isn't about the finish. This is about the way about the path. And the tools edit our ideas, which is quite lovely. None of us is capable of holding the entire space of potential arts in our mind at any time. So it's lucky for us that jumping to a new medium will instantly snap us into a new landscape. How often does your mind play with visuals composed of giant flat pools of dark velvety values when holding a sharpened graphite pencil? Not often. That tool makes you think of scribbling, of precise etching, of mapping and scribing. Hold a squirrel hairbrush heavy with water, however, and all you'll think of is those velvety pools. Large, amorphous shapes, all of implication. Try layering pastels for a while and see if you don't feel like you're weaving, like you are actually stitching a picture together. And to hold a marker in your hand, a crayon even? Well, some tools just feel like playing like you're down on the floor again, all your work spread before you, drawing the same thing over and over again, just for the joy of it. There's also variety to be found in if your tool puts down gray or color. It's a big difference, an important one. Some tools, full palette of oil colors, for example, can always invite a comparison to reality. There can be the madman idea that with enough work, we could make this look real, like the real thing.
hold charcoal or a pencil, however, and you know, even if you refine to a high level for days, so the forms are compelling and convincing indeed, that no one will ever mistake this for real. It's gray. It's missing one of the most important parts of reality, the color. And yet, it still feels real if you really push it. How many of these important parts of reality can you take away and still have it feel real? And what does that mean about what real really is? <laughs> yeah. Uh, there is something truly strange about the image of a gray drawing. There is a very subtle magic trick there to taking the color out of something. Because form and color in reality, they can't be separated. They're two aspects of the same thing. But in a black and white drawing, you can do the impossible. You can only show the form. It's not for everyone, but I think that's one of the reasons the pencil is my favorite tool. Whatever you do with it, however real you get, it will always produce something distinctly unreal. And I find that very freeing. It's like a constant reminder to not get caught up that it really could be anything, that you can twist it any way you want. What is your tool that focuses your mind on a question you can't get enough of? What aspect of this tool's nature aligns with yours? Is it the dryness of pencil, density of charcoal, the flexibility of oils, the frontier feeling of digital? These varied inherent natures that tools have, they're unavoidable. And our interest in them tells us a great deal about ourselves as people and as artists. At the very least, they tell us that we thought we should do this just because other people do it. And that's quite useful data about yourself on its own. It's always good to know where you're getting your ideas from and to be honest that you're getting them from others. Which is great. We're all in this together. We're all giving each other ideas. Even this video, I don't know if you think about your materials this way. I don't know if you quite care. But maybe if I present this to you, just one so it's in your head, in the future you will. It'll crawl its way inside that head of yours, and maybe, someday, years from now, something interesting will happen to you. You'll take a curve with a pastel or melt some encaustic and get this weird feeling in the pit of your stomach. A rush of true excitement from the way something crumbled in your hand. It did this little natural thing that made you think, oh, that's me. That's all of me. Now that's the gut rush of the artist. And look at that, another 10 minutes. Congratulations once again. Thank you so much for practicing with me. It means so much, can do so much for one's practice to know that you're not alone. That you are part of the deep lineage of artists that have been since time immemorial. And that is wide and covers the earth, fortunately, at this time. The vast diversity of the practices that are present in the world right now, which is definitely greater than at any other time, in greater volume and greater diversity. It allows us the freedom 
to take our practice in any direction we can imagine. We're very, very lucky. You can do whatever you want. Let's draw again tomorrow.